good morning uh, today we are going to do learn about is biodiversity so what is biodiversity this is the definition of okay so uh, biodiversity um, is basically you know uh, the way these uh, animals and plants and animals which are found on the surface of the earth okay so let's see uh, like uh, the varieties of you know trees plants the variety the different varieties of animals which are found on the surface of the earth or on the earth is biodiversity is part of bio bio okay just hold on Yeah. So, uh, what is biodiversity? The term biodiversity refers to the various uh, you know, varieties of life on the earth, and it's uh, at its all level, like from taking uh, you know uh, uh, the plants, animals, all genes to you know ecosystem, and can you know encompass to the evolutionary, ecological, and cultural processes that sustain life. Okay, now biodiversity includes not only species we consider a rare threat, uh, you know, rare or threatened or endangered, but all, uh, but also every living things like from human organ uh, to all level of organisms. So we know a little about such, you know, microbes like fun uh, fungus and uh, you know invertebrates, which are uh, part of biodiversity. Now, the relationship of, of, you know, these things are like hum, whatever uh, human anthropological activities uh, goes on is somewhere putting, you know, uh, is affecting the, uh, you know, biological process in, uh, you know, in nature, in the ecological processes in nature. Okay. Let's talk. Okay, so uh, so uh, it includes all the species in uh, like taking from fungus to microbial, uh, even you know um, uh, bacteria and invertebrates. It uh, at the center of bio, you know, diversity and conservation. We must understand that humans' activity in human culture, uh, uh, and how diverse are they as a part of diversity. Okay, so we use the term bioculture to describe the dynamic, you know, uh, continuity evolving into the interconnection of nature of people and place. And this, uh, you know, notion that the social and biological dimension are interrelated as, you know, uh, this, uh, the concept con uh, concises. So that the human uses the knowledge and beliefs uh, the influence and in turn uh, are influenced by it. So, by ecological system of, uh, of you know, which human continuity are a part, this relationship makes all biodiversity, including the species which is on land as well as on sea, and the culture linking to places uh, where we live and be, uh, you know, right there. We are in you know distant land, important to our well-being as well as uh, you know a role in you know, maintaining a diversity uh, and healthy planet. Uh, so why it is important? 
okay so you understood this relationship like human culture and natural resources what is the relationship so wherever human um, beings are living they are related to nature and whatever the nature is giving you resource is related to the culture so it is more like a cycle it is more like an you know exchange okay now coming to a question very important question is like why biodiversity is important biodiversity is important to most aspects of our life as like we value biodiversity for many reasons like um, uh, like uh, utilitarian or you know um, intrinsic uh, nature which means we you know value biodiversity both to provide for you know humans like utility com completing the utility and in turn we are you know in in our activity we are also giving back to the nature okay so that's why it is a you know biodiversity has a cultural value to human as well as uh, you know uh, to spiritual and religious and beliefs and you know um, other you know human aspect of the uh, region so this intrinsic value of you know biodiversity refers to the inherent worth which is you know independent of uh, it's you know value to anyone or anything like uh, uh, this is more of a you know philosophical philosophical concept which can be um, thought as a um, inaudible rights to exist but finally the value of biodiversity can also be understood through the lens of relationship now we uh, form a, and strive for with uh, you know each other and the rest of the region so we may value biodiversity because of how it shapes uh, and who we are our relationship to each other and social norms so the relation uh, right, uh, relational value are part of people and individual or collective sense of well-being so the responsibility for the you know uh, connection with environment the different values the place and the diversity are important because they can influence the con you know uh, con conversion uh, uh, decisions and people uh, you know people make every day what well, then you know uh, just a minute the slides are not changing yeah. so uh, what are the things that are very important like forest forest importance of forest but you know biodiversity have you know various aspects like forest so importance of forest forest play uh, you know helps to preserve the uh, biodiversity forest are natural habitat for plants and animals forests provide timber wood fuel medicines fodder and so many other things forest helps in maintaining ecological balance it controls climate and rainfall uh, um, it helps in prevention of soil erosion and control of flood it helps in maintaining the oxygen carbon dioxide balance in the nature so forests are you know biodiversity hotspots basically so bio what you know biodiversity hotspots can be measured by you know number of species found there and the range of different life forms which is present okay so the various species we find and the various life forms we find in that area is called you know biodiversity the con um, conservation means that preservation of biodiversity Uh, we have inherited uh, uh, or you know loss of any uh, one part of that you know uh, uh, ecosystem will uh, destabilize the entire thing so so you have to conserve the entire bio um, to uh, you know protect the ecosystem there now who are the stakeholders of forest uh, people who are associated with forest are directly or indirectly are the stakeholders like people living in and around the forest depends on forest and their livelihoods are dependent on it so they are the stakeholders of taking care of the forest in those areas then industrialists who you know use the raw material for forest for manufacturing papers uh, medicines and furnitures and so on are also the stakeholders of taking care of the forest so um, they uh, they cannot only extract the resource from the forested areas they also have to give back to the nature 
So the forest department of the government of India uh, or government uh, who owns the forest and controls the resources from the forest are also the stakeholders and caretakers of the forest. Uh, natural nature and wildlife, uh, you know, uh, organizations who want to conserve and preserve the forested areas and the, you know, the entire species of the forest uh, are also an important stakeholders of the the uh, forest. Okay, so now the conservation of forest is like uh, can be you know help just. Okay, so the conservation of forest, like forest can be conserved by afforestation, um, you know, preventing and reduction of deforestation uh, activities, you know, uh, overgrazing of cattle, uh, you know, by you know, settling of wildlife sanctuaries and, you know, national park biodiversity and um, uh, are the, you know, techniques of, you know, uh, uh, conserving forests like movements like Mo one mohats of chifka movements have helped uh, preserving forest areas there was a case study in the united states of america uh yellowstone national park uh once yellowstone national park was ripped with you know uh, uh, wolves uh the you know big wolves there and uh so the you know uh, there were big clans of wolves uh, running around in the Yellowstone National Park. But eventually, with over hunting of the wolves in those areas, uh, these areas were left with only small, you know, uh, prey animals like uh, you know foxes and uh, jackals and you know small uh, and coyotes were only left in those areas. So what happened here is that there was a sudden increase, or you know, in the population of uh grazing animals uh like you know deers and prairie dogs they are actually rodents prairie dogs they were you know uh, they suddenly uh, started rising in population in turn what happened is that the uh, because they were you know over grazing on those pastures the vegetation cover slowly slowly declined and because the vegetation cover declined, uh, the physical features, you know, uh, also were vulnerable to erosion as there were more and more, uh, you know, flood uh, frequency increased because ve vegetation and vegetation decreased, uh, the flood frequency also increased. Uh, uh, the river banks were very unstable, you know, they did not have a proper stable flow uh, as they used to have. So. A few conservationists have reintroduced wolves back into the uh, Yellowstone National Park. Initially, that project was started from a very few small packs, but as the wolf pack started returning back to Yellowstone National Park, uh, it was seen over you know a, 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 over a decade period of time they they could actually see the gradual change in the ecosystem. You know, the population of herding animals, uh, grazing animals predominantly, were reduced. Uh, the, uh, the, you know, uh, the, uh, what do you call, 
on the excessive uh, uh, you know small um, the population of small prey animals like coyotes and uh, foxes were also reduced or minimized because you know wolves are territorial animals so they hold their territories and hence they also controlled the entire population in those areas so they not only uh, by returning the uh, uh, apex predator of that region uh, reintroduction of the, that apex predator of that region helped uh, reduce the uh, you know overgrazing problem in, in uh, yellowstone national park but it also helped in rejuvenating the ecosystem so we can take up such you know projects such activities to help rejuvenate the ecosystem that we have lost but you have to ha every region will have a different uh, you know approach will require a different approach like in the yellowstone national park they just had to reintroduce uh, wolves back to the uh, national park and uh, the uh, now the river system is much stabler uh, you know stable uh, banks there are you know less frequency of floods uh, greener pastures were seen so all these things are, you know, very uh, can uh, just happen by just one sensitive step towards conservation. Wildlife, like uh, the importance of bi wildlife, they help preserve biodiversity. They help maintain the food chain and the food web. Like the, you know, the case study I've told you about Yellowstone National Park. Uh, it helped in, you know, maintaining the food chain and the food web. So there is a very important uh, thing that we need to understand is that we have to maintain the balance between, uh, you know, the prey and the, you know, and the, and the and the predators. So the prey and the predator balancing will also help in, you know, regeneration and regrowth of, you know, and the uh, plants uh, in that region so it, it cannot be like only uh, predator animals uh, you know living there uh, it will you know completely that area will again go barren with plants and animals because grazing animals help dispersing the seeds and plants to different areas so they also help in generation of plants and animals uh, plants in that region Apart from that, overgrazing will also reduce it. So there has to be an equilibrium which is maintained. So by you know maintaining the you know and preserving the balance between the food chain and the food web will help the ecosystem in uh, in a totality. Okay. Now the conservation of wildlife. Just a minute. Hold on. Okay, so uh, that's what, how we, you know, conserve and maintain an equilibrium among the uh, food chain and the food web. So the conservation of wildlife, like prevention of habitat and animal, banning of poaching of the animal, you know, protecting endangered species of uh, their, you know, setting up wildlife sanctuaries, national parks, bio reserves and reserves and so on. These all activities can help preventing and preserving the wildlife in that region okay uh the cause uh you know uh, casual factors of threat in you know natural resources will be uh the development uh pressure on natural resources so whenever we go into developmental activities it always stress the natural resources of that region encroachment is always a 
threat to the natural resources like whenever the people on the fringes of the you know forest will slowly slowly increase encroach into the forested areas increasing their you know um, agricultural land and you know uh, getting their animals for grazing in, inside the you know for a protected forest will you know uh, not only stress the uh, natural resources will also stress the wildlife of that region um exploration of natural resources uh, exploitation of natural resources like we keep on extracting more than what we need to uh, will also put a stress human induced disaster will cause uh, you know stress to natural resources uh, threats uh, to natural resources like you know uh, wrong and faulty approach of rejuvenating a nature like i'll give you an example what happens in, uh, happened few years back is that uh, uh africanized acacia seeds were introduced in rajasthan and gujarat the arid region of the country because they require less moisture less water and they are very resistant uh, trees uh, plant they they you know can uh, take up water from the you know uh, soil and you know completely devoid the soil of the moistures uh because uh, africanized acacia is not a natural uh vegetation of this country it has caused you know uh, uh it had uh, uh, this is term called ecological succession we will come to that on some other lecture but uh, through this ecological succession what happened is when the seeds were spread over these areas this kick uh, this acacia this is also known as kikar in gujarat it is known as uh, ba bagar kikar or something like that so what happened it it uh, you know it is so resistant that it uh, stressed out the resources uh, of that region so much that the natural plants trees of that region were devoid of the nutrition and they started uh, you know uh, dying off and they started retrieving and uh, rarer and rarer they, these species were seen and uh, and they kept on encroaching into further more so this is an example of an encroachment of a species uh, it's a plant species it may look it harmless not only four legged animal or two legged a moving animal is a uh, can uh, is capable of encroachment but also plants and trees can also be uh, introduced into an area can also have a adverse effect so it was a faulty approach of making this region into green because they are not making this region into green they are uh, you know stressing the natural resources of that area okay management of these uh, you know human activity is very important and political action political issues uh, and policies will you know affect all the resources here uh india's effort for biodiversity conservation has been you know wide uh, you know uh, has a wide spectrum like you know dr m s uh, swaminathan in 1983 suggested the uh, various categories like uh, cultivated varieties in um, current use uh, primitive uh, cultivator and land uh, race wild species of potential value to human um then in suite um conservation techniques uh conservation under the natural conditions okay that is in suite and ex suite conservation technique so in suite conservation uh, which is like a conservation under natural condition it includes conservation of animals plants uh, in their native ecosystem or even man made ecosystem which provides them their you know native uh, ecological balance now it appeals only to you know it it is applies only to uh, the plants and animals of that region it aims at preserving the land uh, race with you know wild uh, uh, you know relatively so it uh, preserves the um, area the the specific animal of that area from other varieties like you know the black buck black buck is only seen in rajasthan that's why it is you know prey uh, people pray for them you know they take they consider uh, they, they have given an status of a god so uh, it is only for 
on the uh, state of Rajasthan. It is a highly endangered species also, as well as it is a protected species. Similarly, uh, exude conservation is uh, conservation under controlled condition like zoos. Okay, they are controlled conditions. Okay, now it is done through establishment of gene banks. Like, you know, you have uh, panda, uh, black panda. Uh, black panda copyright uh, the rights of black panda is only by the country china and they give a black panda uh, as a lease to other countries okay so they they have uh, this genetic pool with them so that you know they have given uh, these black panda to other countries to enhance the genetic pool uh, but uh, they have the rights on like all the pandas over the world it, it is the china's property Okay, so it is a chief, uh, you know, mode of preservation of genetic resources. Seeds, plants, cells, tissues, organs are preserved under uh, appropriate conditions to be reused. Now, resource management development will also help in biodiversity, less e like economical use of resources to achieve minimum waste, sustainable use of economic resources, multiple purpose use of resources, integ you know, integrated planning in use of natural resources, location of industries with a review of reducing, uh, you know, uh, transfer, you know, uh, cost of the minimum uh, value. So the planning of the resources like uh, uses agriculture and uh, horticulture, forestry, like animal husbandry are all part of it. Human dimensions in natural resources are that, you know, human takes uh, are dependent, are part of nature and are dependent on the natural resources. Okay. Uh, okay. The challenges and impact on the natural resources are that, you know, the various stakeholders finding a feasible way to, you know, uh, balance it, uh, you know, making an equilibrium it, uh, of, you know, using it and selecting criteria of, you know, various uh, how you can you know uh, adopt the various techniques of you know handling and preserving the biodiversity the agricultural extension approaches like you know general agricultural extension approach uh, commodity specialized approach training and visit uh, you know visiting approach participatory approach project ma management approach are all different approaches of you know, may, may, you know uh, maintaining the you know demand from uh, the agriculture or productivity uh, sectors, but uh, you know, um, not by entirely depending on the ecosystem. Okay, so again, coming back to this, like you know, biodiversity is uh, you know refers to the variety of variable uh, um, variable among the group of living organisms and the ecosystem, uh, and the complex in which they are occur. Now, in con uh, you know con um, conventions on biodiversity. In 1992, biodiversity has been defined as the uh, variability among living organisms from all resources, including inter um, alien, uh, terrestrial, uh, marine, and other aquatic ecosystem. And this ecological, uh, you know, complexities of which they are part of. Like levels of the uh, different biodiversity is that. Uh, genetic uh, variations, gen genetic diversity, species diversity, and eco uh, the variations in ecosystem, different ecosystems. Genetic diversity is like basic uh, source of diversity. The genes found in the uh, you know, organisms can be numerous combinations, uh, each of which you know gives rise to some variabilities. Okay, like human beings are the most diverse, uh, you know, species. If you see, like you will come across different uh, skin color, tone, eyes, hair, and you know, uh, uh, height, uh, eating habits, teeth, everything. In you know, genetically, if you see the biological factors of, you know, you will have a diverse biological factors which are found all over the world. Similarly, if you see dogs, dogs are also genetically you know, varied, like you will find short dog, um, long dog, tall dog, uh, you know, you know, uh, different colors of uh, the coat of the dogs, you will find. Similarly, you will come across uh, various uh, genetic di diversion in cats and horses. 
so does fishes have you know different varieties genetic variations are there in uh, fishes uh, plants also you have you know different varieties of genetic variations are there in plant vari uh, variabilities so uh, uh, the more variable it is the better and the stronger the species survival will be uh, species diversity is like variability found within the population of a specific or between the species of a community uh, the present species uh, richness and uh, abundance uh, you know uh, it represents a you know species richness how rich they are in genetic pool how abundant they are found in that region are you know uh, the uh, you know representation of that region uh, there are two index of measuring the species diversity that is the simpson index and the shannon winer index okay shannon winer index and simpson index we will talk about it all you know when we are going to you know uh, go further detail in understanding uh, ecosystem and diversity ecosystem diversity is the diversity of ecological complexity uh, showing variations in ecological you know uh, inches tropic uh, structures and uh, you know um, food chain food web nutrition cycle and so on ecological system shows variations in you know moisture temperature altitude precipitation and so on so forth okay so india is a mega diverse uh, you know uh, country with about 47000 species of plant 89000 over 89000 species of animal india is considered a mega diverse you know diversity region and because it has a wide varieties of endemic flora and fauna which is only found in india are uh, the reasons it is called mega diversity now um bio geographical classifications are like based on flora uh, like uh, we have himalayans eastern himalayans central himalayas like taking from assam indo gangetic plains uh, deccan plateaus malabar coast konkan coast and coastal regions islands are all part of you know biodiversity all bio hotspots the that are the areas that are extremely rich in biodiversity that harbors a great Uh, diversity of endemic species and at the same time they have been uh, significantly uh, degraded by human activities so a uh, bio hotspots region must satisfy the conditions that it must at least support with more than 50000 endemic uh, plant species and must support 70% of the original habitat there should be 20 Twenty-five percent of hotspots in the world, and India's hotspots are the you know uh, eastern uh, Himalayas, western Ghats are part of uh, biodiversity hotspots. Endemic species are which are you know basically confined to certain region, like it may be you know continent, country, or state, or even small ecosystem, like Asiatic lion. It is an endemic species of India. similarly kangaroo it is an endemic species of australia okay uh, uh you lima uh, uh, you uh, you will find this species only in latin america okay so uh, then you have you know value of biodiversity that is conservative value uh, we have productive value social value aesthetic value you know uh, ethical value and in, uh, you know optional value and ecosystem values so they are all part of you know uh, bio the system and how it is valuable for us we have a consumptive value for uh, you know biodiversity like it provides us food it provides us shelter it provides us you know um, raw materials uh, right uh, it provides us fiber uh, it provides us medicines uh, as a fuel it provides wood coal and petroleum can also be you know part of bio you know, bio um, as fossilized uh, bio is, uh, fuel is you know part once part of biodiversity uh, productive value is like uh, elephant tusk is highly valued although it is illegal to poach uh, elephant tusk uh, musk deer uh, that uh, the gland of the musk deer is you know prized uh, value and people poach these animals for their you know musk glands um lack 
it is an in, you know uh, uh, lac insect is uh, a type of an insect which you know uh, seeps uh, some type of sap which can be used which is used for various purposes silk worms uh, animals for fur are all you know predictive value but now it has a cap and you know has some you know restriction in utilizing it social value like uh, it whatever you know uh, trees and you know uh, plants and animals we are surrounded with we have we develop a ritual we develop our culture according to it like we a prey tiger we pray uh, uh, peacock as a bird a lotus is used uh, for praying banyan tree is pray you know is looked upon as one of the gods and we pray and we value it tulsi as a you know tree it is you know basil uh, you know we value it and we pray why we pray we uh, pray is you know um, uh, a cultural way of you know saying that we value these natural elements that we have uh, aesthetic value biodiversity provides a lot of aesthetic and beauty into uh, you know uh, into the life like where, wherever you go into national park and zoological garden and you know sanctuaries you will see wild flowers and animals and they are beautiful in nature all by itself you can find the you know natural happiness when once you go into these areas you will find a mental peace your body is at ease and uh, you know uh, the anxiety of your you know uh, hustle bustle everyday life will go on will be gone if you have a, a, go and take a trip around these biodiverse uh, areas like national park and zoological uh, garden and sanctuaries they are beautiful like bird sanctuary if you go and watch go see a bird sanctuary it has just a Okay, so uh, they all have a beautiful aesthetic value to it. All right, now uh, it uh, has a very vital role in maintaining the ecological balances. Like I have given you a case study of uh, Yellowstone National Park. It mean, uh, just by introduction of you know a, pr a prime predator has an ecological balance. Uh, got back the ecological balance. It not only balanced the ecology in terms of flora and fauna, it also balanced the ecology in terms of uh, abiotic components like stabilizing the riverbeds, stabilizing the flood frequency were also part of balancing the ecology by just introduction, reintroduction of that uh, species to back to that area. Soil uh, formation and protection are also part of it. So, uh, soil, it, you know, plants and, and you know, growing trees and plants are part of erosional processes as well as conservation of these soil materials. Okay, so they are conserved in a longer term. All right, nutrients like you know, uh, storage and cycle, nutrient cycles, are, it pre prevents as a you know nutrition storage uh, resources. It recycles. Uh, you know, uh, the waste recycles the nutrient cycle again back into the you know uh, atmosphere and into the soil, maintains the climatic stability, uh, it maintains eco ecosystem, like, you know, uh, it maintains the food chain and the food web. Uh, it re regulates the, you know, oxygen and carbon dioxide balance in the uh, nature. Uh, so helping uh, reducing uh, you know uh, greenhouse effect so the larger the you know forested area you have the better uh, you know your um, oxygen level will be there in that region and uh, you know carbon sink it can act as a carbon sink like uh, amazon forest it is known as the lung of the uh, earth it um, about you know uh, 70 percent of you know carbon dioxide is you know absorbed either by the ocean water or uh, you know the forest of amazon so it is you know good that you can have a more forested area so that 
you know, more uh, oxygen balance and equilibrium is maintained. Surviving of the natural calamity will it also helps in surviving the natural calamity, like it controls flood uh, frequency, controls uh, cyclone effects of the cyclones and typhoons into the hinterland. Then it also provides natural resources and you know forested areas provides an optional value of you know once if you do not have certain things you can have various options. The so more diverse your biodiversity is, the more option you get as a resources. Okay, so it uh, then ethical value is like it develops an ethical uh, issues uh, under uh, oneself. Like you you will feel sorry. For you know, uh, you know, uh, an animal who has been going extinct of from that area, like dodo, uh, you know, uh, dodo uh, was a bird. Uh, it was uh, known as the most foolish bird. It was so overpoached by the uh, European, um, you know, explorer that it went into extinction. It was a purposeful extinction because it because of the human activity. Now, dodo bird is very close relative for the uh, in a, uh, in a passenger pigeon are very close relative to dodo bird. And it is no more there on the earth right, because of the over extinction. All right. Now, loss of biodiversity, loss of habitat, poaching, animal, wildlife, conflict, uh, uh, amusement strips. Uh, then invasion of you know toxic species, invasion of the you know unwanted species into area like I have given you an example of kikar that is African uh, acacia tree. Uh, then natural calamity, uh, uh, you know, uh, it can also trigger natural calamity in uh, you know once you have no value or no conservation left into your bio uh, to conserve the biodiversity. Habitat loss and fragmentation will also increase the you know, reduction of biodiversity and will bring you to the brink of you know, more uh, of a uh, you know, natural calamity in, in your pathway. And disturbances and degradation, like man-made disturbances and degradation will increase the loss of biodiversity. Biodiversity is sensitive to both you know, population, human population and destructive uh, to you know, fish, you know, uh, fishes and animals and you know uh, fisheries all over the world now then we have selective forestry which is again will be a uh, uh, danger to uh, biodiversity like you know only gro growing sal tree teak tree or eucalyptus will uh, threaten the uh, natural vegetation of that region because eucalyptus is not a uh, you know natural uh, uh, it's not a part of a natural vegetation of our country. So uh, si similarly, teak and sal, although it, they are part of the you know vegetation, but only selective forestry will uh, you know uh, put the ecological uh, ecology into an unbalanced uh, you know will put it into a disbalanced position. Like uh, uh, in Indonesia, palm tree, uh, palm forest or palm uh, uh, trees are grown for um, palm oil and palm sugar. Now, growing palm oil and palm sugar is uh, pu putting a stress to the wildlife in that in area, endangering a endemic species which is found in uh, these regions are uh, like orangutan. Orangutan is an endemic species of that region and which is being uh, threatened to uh, Almost, you know, very few orangutan and ha natural habitat are left because of the excessive palm tree uh, foresting. Uh, over exploration and uh, intensive agriculture will also threaten the biodiversity. So conservation of uh, biodiversity is very important. And there are many international treaties which are written uh, for, you know, bio, you know, conserving these biodiverse areas. Like, you know, Nairobi in uh, May 1992 with the adoption of Nairobi Final Act by Nairobi, con uh, you know, conference for adoption or for the agreed text of the uh, con convention on bio Logical diversity. 
so this convention was open for the you know signature at Uni united nation conference on environment and uh, development of the earth summit in june 1992 and uh, entered into the force in december of the same year so uh, the uh, participated in the uh, convention including nine, 90s, 90 countries in uh, associated with the united nation the convention called for you know genetic resource you know conserving the genetic resources by preserving sensitive ecological rehabilitating degrading uh, degradation of ecology uh, enacting uh, uh, license uh, that protects the endangered plants and animal species in addition to the treaty uh, requirement and financial assistance for the developing countries so that they can afford program designed to conserve their biological resource uh, the uh, conference of you know uh, these parties and the governing bodies of the you know organization has been established uh, thematical programs that set goals to strategies for conserving genetic resources in which several ma uh, major type of ecosystems marine and coastal areas inland waterways forests mountains mountain areas agricultural areas and dry land and subhumid land are part of it so united nation uh, named uh, two, uh, 2010 as the international year of biodiversity a, it is a year long celebration intended to raise uh, you know public awareness uh, about the importance of biodiversity and to enforce the con conservation efforts so many of the conservation goal promoted by the you know uh, international year of biodiversity helped uh, resurface prodigally a you know later united nation awareness campaign such as the international year for forestry international year for soil and international year for sustainable and ecosystem development in uh, 2017 2015 and 2011 consecutively okay so uh, this is all for you know talking about biodiversity its conservation and the role of various human as well as natural aspect how it is stressing these aspects and how culturally we are intertwined with biodiversity of our region okay so i would request all of you to go to your lms and take the quiz for the day